Hi, this is Christopher Sparrow with iTechU.org, and I've got a cool unboxing today of a new smartwatch from OnePlus, the OnePlus Watch 2. Those of you that have been following the site and have been following me or know me know and understand that, A, I'm a watch junkie. I love watches. And two, I am really a smartphone jun or smartphone and a smartwatch junkie. I love me some technology, right? So this is a brand new device from OnePlus. It is just now hitting the market, and it is an interesting device in and of itself. It's a dual processor watch. It is something that is supposed to be smart, cool, innovative, big enough to read, but yet offers enough variation and enough power-saving features to give it some really long-lasting battery life. This has been compared to the um, Mobvoi TicWatch uh, 5 Pro, uh, which also has a, uh, a multiprocessor kind of setup and a cool way of separating not only... Um, what you do when the watch is active, but what the watch does when it is inactive. All right. It has something called essential mode, and it has a really interesting sort of 80s kind of Casio sort of uh, secondary LCD screen that really drops the power draw down to just a tiny sip that will allow the watch to last a long time. Overnight, when it knows that you're sleeping or when most people are sleeping, and yes, you can set those options on the TicWatch 5 Pro, um, it will actually go ahead and uh, drop into yet another uh, power sipping mode called Essential Mode that will, it's just really just, just the Joe Fridays, just what you got to have in order to keep the watch keeping with time and date and... Uh, just those things that it needs to have while you are asleep and while you are effectively inactive. So this is supposed to have a dual processor setup. It's supposed to have a way cool sort of um, configuration that will allow that will allow it to really have long lasting battery life. Let's go ahead and dig in to the One Plus Watch 2. Okay, I want to dive into the box. All right, now I am going to spout some uh, specs and functionality at you, but I don't know that you guys would expect any less. So while I don't want to bore you while I jump into the box, I do want to touch on these, all right? Um, this is either, well, this is a stainless steel watch on top with a plastic and, and um, glass bottom, all right? Um, it comes, regardless of stainless steel cover, color, all right, stainless steel color cover, either being either black or silver, all right, it comes with a floral rubber strap and is about yeah, somewhere between 140 to 210 centimeters in length, all right? Uh, this is a 47 uh, uh, millimeter watch that is uh, 46 by uh, 40, 46.6 by 12.1 millimeters, and this includes the PPG sensor, um, which is 13.65 centimeters. All right, uh, it weighs about uh, 49 grams by itself, or 80 grams with the strap. All right, so it's it's okay. Now, as far as the screen is concerned. This is a 1.4 inch screen, which is about 3.63 centimeters. Um, it's got a four, 466 by four, 466 AMOLED display, which it has about uh, what 326 pixels per inch and has a default brightness of 600 nits. All right, so it's a bright display. Um, this has got a uh, 2.5D sapphire crystal on the top, so it's going to resist scratches and bangs and cracks and whatnot. Um, the battery, the battery is okay. This is not a really great 
battery, all right? Because uh, it's, it's only 500 milliamps. Um, so this will, um, well, it's only 500 milliamps, all right? Um, OnePlus does do some things with this watch, with the processor and a microcontroller unit that it's got in there. It's a, got a dual sort of processor kind of thing going on that really enhances the battery life, all right? So um, while it's only 500 milliamps, this thing fast charges, all right? It will go ahead and get you a full 24 hours worth of charge in about 10 minutes, all right? Um, it will go ahead and give you uh, a full 100% charge in about 60 minutes. So it's pretty quick in the charging, all right? If you just got to grab and go, stick it on the charger before you leave for the day, and in the right battery mode, all right, you're going to have um, a full day's charge on, um, on 10 minutes worth of time on the charger, all right? Now, there are, like I said, there are three modes to this, all right? And I want to go ahead and pull this little bad boy out, all right? So here is the watch, and let's, yeah, there it is, all right? So this is a Wear OS watch, and um, as I mentioned, because it's Android phones made by OnePlus, um, I want to uh, mention that um, this, this has got three different modes, all right? Uh, smart mode, heavy, heavy use in smart mode, all right? And then power saving mode. Now, in smart mode, if you use any of the supported watch faces, very important, for smart mode, all right, um, your battery can last up to 100 hours, all right? Um, this has your always on display turned off, um, you're only uh, using default health monitoring with, um, with this thing. Um, your Bluetooth connectivity is to your phone uh, about 14 hours uh, in a day. Um, you've got uh, your Wi-Fi connection on standby or only about an hour of use per day. Um, sleep monitoring, six and a half hours, not a full eight. Um, Raised to the wrist, to the wakes, the scream, 220 times a day. Um, I would change that personally. I would turn the raised wrist off uh, and put the always on display on so that you get something that's very minimal, like you can see here on my Pixel watch. All right, that particular display tells the time and the date, and that's it. When you tap the screen, you get the full watch display. All right, um, and that's what I would do. But Again, this is what OnePlus is recommending. So your always on display is off and your raise to, uh, raise to wake is 220 times a day. You get 130 message notifications um, for various different applications. Your screen use is about 20 minutes a day. All right. Uh, call reminders of uh, five seconds, six times a day. Uh, Bluetooth call five minutes a day. Um, Mobile Plus Watch data sync about uh, 500 seconds per day. Um, Bluetooth headset con um, connection so that you can listen to music um, like via Spotify or some other uh, music is about 15 minutes a day. Um, outdoor running 30 minutes and alarm clock three times. All right. Um, and that's smart mode. You'll notice that, the, that it's very, very stingy and somewhat not very realistic. you really got to limit yourself to get up to 100 hours of battery life. Now, if you're like me and you're a heavy watch user, all right, they say that you can use this thing heavily and get up to 48 hours a day but your usage is somewhere in the neighborhood of something like this. Um, you've got a, a um, third-party watch face, um, and the dual-engine architecture uh, is deactivated, all right? So you're not going to get that, that uh, um, uh, microcontroller unit to do 
um, too much for you, all right? Because so, it will be uh, deactivated, and you're only going to run on um, the internal chip, and I'll get to what that is in just a minute. Uh, you're always on display is activated. You've got um, dual health monitoring working. You've got uh, Bluetooth uh, connected up to 12 hours a day. Your Wi-Fi is connected up to two hours a day. Um, your sleep monitoring still six and a half hours a day. Raised to wake screen 300 times. Uh, you receive up to 180 messages per day. Um, screen time um, using various applications up to 30 minutes. Your call reminder five seconds, six times a day. Bluetooth call again five minutes. Uh, Google Maps navigation 15 minutes. Uh, phone and watch data sync 500, still 500 seconds. Um, Bluetooth and earphones up to 30 minutes. Outdoor running with GPS up to 30 minutes. And again, alarm clock only three times. Um, and that gives you up to 48 hours worth of use. So two days on a single charge. All right. Now your power saving mode, which will get you up to 12 days worth of use. 12 days. All right. Um, so your um, your Bluetooth connection, I mean, you're only nine, you're 90 minutes of outdoor exercises a week, a week now. All right. Your raise uh, to wake screen is 180 times a day. You get 180 messages a day. You've got five incoming calls, five minutes of Bluetooth calls, uh, three alarms, and your uh, sleep detection is six hours a day. If you're going to limit it to that, you're going to get up to 12 days worth of battery life. All right. So three different kinds of user modes, three different kinds of time to be realistic Depending on uh, your mileage, of course, is going to vary depending on, on your use case and how you use the watch. Realistically, I think you're going to get anywhere between uh, a full 24 hours to maybe 36 uh, to 48 hours, depending on how your usage goes. So you're going to have to watch. Um, you're probably going to get one night's worth of sleep and sleep tracking off of this, and then you're going to have to go and charge the thing after you know a day or two of heavy use boom all right uh, and again 10 10 minutes should get you 24 hours worth of use but you've really got to watch all right you've got to watch now this has a snapdragon w5 gen 1 processor and again it's got that microcontroller unit in it that will allow you to really go ahead with the right watch face all right which basically is their watch faces, all right, their supported watch faces, uh, you're going to get that extended battery time, all right, with the uh, dual processor units. Um, you're, it's got two gigabytes of RAM and a 32 gigabyte ROM. It's got a uh, four gigabyte EMCC for the real-time operating system, which is Wear OS 4, all right. Um, your connectivity, you've got Wi-Fi, you've got 5G, uh, 2.4, um, uh, gigahertz. Uh, it supports uh, 802.11a, b, g, and n. All right. It's got Bluetooth 5 and 5 only. Um, it's got uh, Bluetooth low energy uh, support uh, in Bluetooth 5 and on the watch. Um, HFP 1.6, uh, HSP 1.2, A2DP 1.3, AVRCP16, SPP1.1, uh, and later versions. Bluetooth calling is supported in both smart mode and, as, as I said, uh, power saving mode. So you've got the ability to do some things with the watch, but again, you want it to last. And there, it, it does have the ability to last. You've really got to watch how you use. All right. Um, it has an accelerometer, a gyroscope, optical heart rate sensor, a geomag a magnetic sensor, light sensor, and a barometer. All right. Um, it has got over 100 native watch faces. Now, these watch faces are ones that they use that will support both the, my, the um, Snapdragon uh, W5 Gen 1 as well as their MCU. So you really need to think about which one of those 100 might be best for you. If you don't like those, 
Of course, you can use any watch face that is compatible with Wear OS and any watch face gallery that is uh, or uh, app that is uh, compatible with Wear OS. But again, you're going to you're going to burn more juice. All right. Um, uh, it supports uh, Google Apps, uh, which is Assistant Wallet, Maps, Calendar, Phone, Messages, and Gmail. Um, you get notifications for um, all those things, plus Bluetooth calls, um, the alarm clock, stopwatch, timer, weather, media controls, and playback. Um, better, it's got a battery manager, obviously a compass, and a flashlight. Wellness and fitness tracking, which some of you may find uh, directly part of your uh, use case and something that you want to go ahead and, and uh, use with this thing. Um, as I said, sleep monitoring uh, monitors sleep stages, light, uh, deep, uh, REM and waking. It provides you with a sleep score as well as with um, a respiration rate, snoring risk assessments, uh, daily sleep report, and auto it will automatically detect when you fall asleep. All right. From a health monitoring perspective, you've got your heart rate, high, low uh, heart rate warnings, uh, resting heart rate and a baseline heart rate. Uh, it will monitor daily activities uh, and uh, provide achievement reminders. It does stress monitoring and it has health apps that support uh, Google Health uh, Connect service. So it is going to go ahead and um, sync with all of the Google Health related stuff like Google uh, Google Fit. Don't know if it'll do the Fitbit stuff, but it should do Google Fit. Um, it's got 100 plus sports modes. There are six different types of automatic um, uh, recognition for running, walking, cycling, swimming, rowing, uh, and an elliptical machine, for example. Um, it's got a prof uh, professional indicator analysis. It does uh, aerobic uh, training, cardiorespiratory capacity, recovery time, heart rate uh, recovery, uh, and rate uh, running posture, uh, track running modes, etc. Now it's got uh, f 11 different professional sport modes. It's got an outdoor skiing, uh, running, tennis, badminton, pool swimming, jump rope, mountain hiking. Uh, so um, somebody like um, uh, Joe McLaughlin from uh, the I Tech Gear Weekly, who has said that he's going to go on this long 20-mile hike sometime later this year, may find this of particular value. Uh, walking, uh, outdoor cycling, elliptical machines, and a rowing machine. All right. And it'll go ahead and monitor a number of different factors within each of those types of sports modes. All right. One thing that I wish, and I don't know that anybody does this, but I really wish somebody would do bowling. Hello, if you're out there and you're watching this and you are um, a, a, a smartwatch manufacturer, uh, goodness, would love to see bowling in there. All right. It does, depending on um, how many people on the team and how often you bowl, you know, living, lifting anywhere between, for a guy, anywhere be lifting be, uh, between a 12 to 16 pound weight and rocking that sucker back and forth and giving it a chuck down the lane, it does work your heart up a little bit and you do, and you can break a sweat. All right. Um, this is um, IP68 um, reliable. Uh, to five atmospheres, um, and it also supports uh, mill standard 810H. So this thing is, pr uh, you know, waterproof, dustproof, um, and it uh, should be submergible underwater for prob at, uh, probably, like I said, five atmospheres for probably somewhere in the neighborhood of around 30 minutes. Although I wouldn't necessarily um, go too bananas. This this is not going to be a diving watch. But it will you you can get in the pool and swim with this, so don't worry about ruining it because you took a long swim. All right, so um, and it also does uh, support NFC payments uh, and supports Google Wallet. So with all of that stuff, this is a pretty decent watch that should last you for a while. Let's take a look now and get into the box. Alrighty then, let's actually open the box. I know this is what most of you were were really waiting for, and I apologize for the uh, for the long windedness there. But this is something that um, here we go. 
This is something that um, is really important to me. Knowing what I'm buying and what it supports and uh, what it will and will not do and how long the battery is going to last. Um, I've got my, I, my daily driver, my smartphone daily driver is an iPhone, all right? Um, even though I carry my OnePlus open with me as well throughout the day, i.e. the, the, the um, Wear OS watch, um, it is important to me to know and understand what the watch will and will not do and how long it's going to last. Um, I usually get anywhere between I usually get anywhere between 24 to 36 hours uh, on a single charge out of my watches, and it's important to me to know how long I have and what it can and cannot do. But let's open the box, shall we? All right, here we go. So the watch here, and it's a lot larger than I thought it was going to be, which from my perspective is good, all right? I've got a somewhat larger wrist, and I feel that uh, the Pixel Watch in and of itself, and this is the original Pixel Watch, not the two, but this is, uh, which, by the way, has the same uh, dimensions and weight as the original Pixel Watch, which this, this is. Um, I feel that this one is a little bit small on my wrist. I've actually got this in a um, a, 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 uh, a separate band, um, obviously, that isn't um, the stock band. And if you look at this, the watch just pops in and out, all right, in and of itself. So that's the Pixel watch inside the, the thing I do, right? Um, what... Most folks, as I mentioned earlier, what most folks are doing is comparing the Watch 2 to the Mobboy Tick Watch 5 Pro, which I have here. All right, so this should be a similarly sized and a similarly functional watch. But let's take a quick look and let's open this up. Now, in the box, you've got the watch, all right, and you have a little pull tab to help you get it out there. All right, now also in the box, and you just sort of pop the top on this, you've got the, um, you get a, a, a charging cable for this. And, and this should be very similar. I thought I saw some pictures at the back of the watch, and I thought it was similar to the charger that comes with the, yes, it is similar. And I wonder if it would, if it would fit. No, it won't fit. Um, I've got a, I've got a, uh, 3D printed charging stand for my, um, Tag Heuer watch, and it's got four pins, but it's got, there is a bit of a curve to this. This is straight. It's got the, it's got the pins, but it's straight across, so doubtful that this watch would charge here, which would have been nice, but, oh well. Um... So you've got the charging, the magnetic charging plate here, all right? Um, and I'm very carefully going to try to work this out of this if I can. I don't know that I'm going to be, there it goes. All right, I don't like to ruin these because I'm one to go ahead and try to resell at a later date. So we want to make certain that this and all of the other packaging material stays as pristine as possible. Now, this does come with a white USB-C to USB-OA. I thought it was USB-C to USB-C, but it's a USB-C to USB-A cable. Um, so any USB-C cable will go ahead and plug right into there, and you lay the watch on top, and it should charge. All right? Um, it would be nice, it would be nice if they all supported Qi charging so that you could just go ahead and use, you know, one universal charger because there are so many things, so many different things that come with a watch um, and so many different things that can affect the way that the watch functions um, and works. And to be very, very honest, um, it would be really nice if manufacturers could make it just a little bit easier on 
consumers. So I don't have to have, you know how many chargers I've got on my desk for watches? There's more chargers on my desk for watches than there are for phones because um, they're all different. They are all different. And that is somewhat disappointing. Now, as I said, uh, this supports your standard Wear OS, and I believe it's a 22 millimeter watch band. All right. Um, hopefully it is. And I've got something else besides that. I hate, I hate uh, fluoro rubber silicone bands. Um, I'm I'm somewhat allergic to silicone, and while it doesn't do anything but make my wrist itch really bad. Um, I've got enough issues with itching and whatnot that I don't need I don't need any additional help uh, from a watch. I'm, again, I'm trying to be careful with the with the uh, packaging material. I don't want to completely ruin it. Although I am cutting one side so that I can just sort of slip it off, and there we go. And I will put that back in the case and, and save it. But this is the, the Wear OS watch screen. Now, this is the uh, Tick Watch. Not the Tick Watch. The, this, this is the um, OnePlus Open Watch 2. This is the 5 Pro. And as you can see, all right, they're about, they're similarly sized, although. The button, there's two buttons for this. One here with a crown, and then a, a function button or an action button down here. All right. Um, with the Tick Watch, it's only got the one, um, it's got the crown here, and their function or essential function button is here on the side. All right. Um, it looks like um like the tick watch it's 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 somewhere in that um size and um it's nice and stiff it's going to hold to your wrist very very well and for all the sensors that it has you really want it to uh the floral carbon uh the floral rubber band um it's got that sort of powdery sort of matte finish to it um and it sits on the wrist pretty well now i'm hoping like i said that the that the watch in and of itself will work with any of the bands that I've got, but this sh this should be pretty easy. And there it's there it goes. All right, and that doesn't look too big on my wrist, although it is much bigger than the than the Pixel Watch that I had on earlier. All right. Um, um, now the other side of the box, all right, has got all of the documentation that goes along with it and in there we've got a user manual and that's it nothing else just the one little book all right um it should be its default is english and it shows you an overview in the front and takes you through pardon all of the appropriate uh ways to go ahead in what the buttons do and how all the sensors work, how to charge it, what connectivity it supports, uh, NFC functionality, um, and exactly what's ev everything else. And then uh, some safety instructions, and then it changes languages. All right. Uh, the print in here is really teeny tiny. Um, the um, OnePlus site does have a specs page, and on that specs page, um, you may be able to find a link to some other documentation, or I would look at the OnePlus product page in order to find this little bad boy online with some much bigger print, because unless you are the $6 million man, those are the majors, um, and the $6 million man, you're not necessarily going to be able to see this without a pair of glasses, especially at my age. But um, that's all that's really in the box. So this is this is kind of cool, all right. Uh, I am going to um, before I post this to the site, I'm going to wait a couple of days and I'm going to get some usage info, and then the unboxing page 
that you will see at itechgear.org. We'll go ahead and have a little bit of information on usability and what kind of uh, battery lifetimes I get and how my use case worked out, uh, which um, watch faces um, were actually worth my time and worth my while. Um, I am a complication, since I'm a watch junkie, I'm a complications junkie, and I like a very informative watch face. Um, unlike um, Larry or uh, Larry McJunkin, Dr. Mr. Larry McJunkin, or um, Mr. Chris Kavula, also host from the I Take Your Weekly, who prefer something with a little bit more uh, traditional look, or at least um, not as crowded of a screen, I want... Um, I want to be able to see, look on my watch and see what's going on with, with uh, the world around me. Uh, actual weather and temperature, um, the battery uh, limit on my phone as well as on uh, the watch, um, how many steps I've taken out of uh, the three or so thousand that I allow myself due to my disability, uh, physical disability every day to take. Um, uh, how many calories I might have burned, uh, how many times I've stood during the day, etc. I like to be able to see a whole bunch of stuff on the watch. And this, with this size screen, you should be able to do something that looks pretty good. So hopefully those 100 native watch faces will have some uh, complications and functionality that will provide me with the information that I'm looking for. Otherwise, this is... Christopher Spera uh, from itechyear.org with the OnePlus Watch 2. <laughs> 